I recently started a project that's going to require me to put together a pretty large image gallery. Now, if you've been working with the block editor for a while, you've probably realized that the default WordPress gallery block has a lot to be desired and generate blocks doesn't have one at all. Of course, there are other block packages like Cadence that do include an image gallery, but I don't want to install a whole other builder inside my install just for one block. In the past, I've kind of faked these by creating grid layouts and then putting images inside of it, but it's really not my favorite solution and it definitely wasn't gonna work on this new build, so I had to go looking for a better solution. I found a gallery block plugin that actually does exactly what I need and has a lot of really great controls. So in this video, I thought I'd show you exactly how that works in case you ever come up into a situation where you need a gallery as well. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, stick around and let's get started. All right, so from the back end of my website, I'm just gonna go to plugins, add new plugin, and we're gonna search for image gallery block. Now in my search, it did come up as the first result here, but if it doesn't come up in the same order for you, we're looking for the one created by WP Developer. Now WP Developer has been around for a while. They've made some add-ons for Elementor and some other products, even though this plugin hasn't been updated in six months and has only 3000 activations, I feel a little bit more confident knowing this is a company that's been around for a while and made many other products. So we're gonna go ahead and hit install now, and then we'll activate the plugin. Once that's activated, we don't need to do any kind of further configurations. We can just go into our pages and add our first image gallery. I've gone ahead and created a page for image gallery. So we'll go ahead inside that. And here we just have a blank section with an inner container. Inside that container, I'm going to click the plus button and we're going to search for image gallery. Here it's this colorful icon and we can click it to insert it into the page. Now we have the option to upload images or get them from our media library. In this case, I've already added some images to our media library, so I'm gonna click that option. We'll click on the first image here, hold shift and click on this image, and this will select all the images within that range, and we can click create a new gallery. Here on the edit gallery page, we have the option to add captions. I have gone ahead and added a caption to this first image here, so we can see how it displays captions on the front end. With all these in here, we'll go ahead and hit insert gallery. With this image gallery selected, we have a whole set of controls over here on the right hand side. We're just going to go through all these and work on styling up this image gallery for my specific project, but I'm going to show you how some of the controls work even on the ones that I'm not using. Inside the general settings, the first thing we have here is layouts. By default, we have the grid layout, which keeps all the images the same size and just crops them to fit, or we have the option for a masonry layout, which is actually what I'm going for. Underneath that, we have styles. This gives us the option to have black and white images that turn to color over hover, or we can have a color overlay once we hover over the images. I don't need either of those things, but those options are here. Next, we have the checkbox for display caption. You can see our first image here is showing the caption. Right now, it's pretty ugly, but we do have some styling controls that we'll go into here in a bit that will give us the option to pretty these up just a little bit. We actually have one more control for the caption, but it's somehow after this image size option. But here we can toggle on this display caption on hover, which makes the caption go away until we hover over the image. That's actually the effect I was after for this image gallery, so I'm gonna leave that option on. Sandwiched between those two caption options are our image size dropdown. That gives us the option to change the image size from default, thumbnail, medium, large, or full size. Now, one of the reasons I actually chose this plugin is because of this next feature here that not all image gallery blocks come with. Here, we can change the number of columns all the way to eight, but it's not that feature that I was after. It was the ability to change this on a device size basis. Here on the desktop, I might wanna have four columns, but on tablet, I might wanna bring that down to three, and on mobile, maybe we go down to two. Having those responsive controls is absolutely critical anytime you're adding an image gallery, so this is one of the things that really sold me about this plugin. We also have the option to change the gap between the images on all of our breakpoints, though you do have to set this in pixel values. Now by default, these images do have a light box, but you can disable that here by clicking on this toggle. I'm gonna to go ahead and leave it on because I think the light box is a nice effect. Next, inside the general tab, we have this filter dropdown. We can click enable filter and you can see this gives us some filter buttons at the top of our image gallery. By default, it gives us an all image toggle and then we can add our different filters in here. It went ahead and gave us a filter one item. We'll just call this category one and we'll add an additional filter of category two. 
with those two filter items in here, we can go down here to our gallery images. We can go ahead and tag each one of these images with the appropriate category. I'm just gonna go ahead and select these first two. And we can see now when we click category one, only that image shows up. And we click category two, the one we tagged with category two shows up. That is a little bit cumbersome of a system if you're gonna set these all up in a big image gallery, but it is nice that it's here. I'm not gonna need it in my case, so we'll go ahead and disable this. When we do, you can see the back end freaks out a little bit and stacks all these images on each other. But if we update this and refresh, everything goes back to normal here. I'll go ahead and open up this list view again, just so you can see what I'm working on. Now we've gone through all the settings here inside the journal tab, so now we can move over to the style. The first thing we have are our image settings. Here we can add a border to our images, either normal or hover state. We can change the border style, and when we add a border, it's going to give us the option to change the border color, the width, which we can set at all of our breakpoints, and the border radius. Now, I actually don't want a border on my images, but I do want to affect a border radius. So I'm going to go ahead here into this border radius and change this to 24 pixels. Again, we can change this by device type, and we can change this from pixels to M's to percentages. For me, this is going to work just fine across all breakpoints, and pixels works for my border radius. Next, we have the option to control our caption styles. If you remember, this caption here is kind of hard to read, so I do want to make some changes to it. First of all, for the text color, I think I will change this to a dark text color that matches the rest of our site, and will contrast a little bit more on that white background. I still think the white background is a little bit too transparent, so I'm going to click here into the background color and make it a little bit more opaque, so now we can read our text a little bit easier. We also have all the typography options in here, so you can change the font family, the size, the weight, and you can do all of this on desktop, tablet, or mobile views. Just underneath those typography settings, we have the option to change the width of this caption. You can see it's just taking up a small width here on my image, but I can go in here and change the width of that in a pixel value, which I probably wouldn't recommend. Instead, I'm going to change this to percentage. Now we can see with this set to 100%, the caption takes up 100% of the width of the image, which is exactly what I was after. We can change the text alignment. Right now it's on center, but we could change this to left. We could change it to right, or we could even justify it, which I wouldn't recommend. For me, I'm going to leave this on center. Now, if our width wasn't taking up 100%, we could also change where that caption shows up on the left, the center, or the right. But since we're taking up 100% width, that's not really going to matter. Here we can change the vertical alignment so we can have the caption at the top, we can have it in the middle, or we can have it down here at the bottom. I think for me, I like it at the bottom. We also have controls over the margin and the padding for our caption, which is nice to have here. And again, we can change this on desktop, tablet, or mobile. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our last tab here, which is the advanced tab. This really affects the entire wrapper of the image gallery, not the individual images. But here we have controls for margin and padding, again, at all of our breakpoints. We can set backgrounds, normal or hover state. We can have background colors or images or gradients. We can set a border or a shadow. We have responsive controls to hide this on desktop, tablet, or mobile. We have animations that affect the entire image gallery. Just to give you an example, we could click this one. You can see the image gallery fades in and up when it loads. For me, these look a little bit cheesy, all fading in together, so I'm probably never going to use that and leave it on none, but those options are here. Lastly, we have the option to add custom CSS, so if you need to write some CSS here in the builder just to affect this gallery, you can do it right here inside the custom CSS box. All right, since we got all that set up, let's go ahead and update this back end and go take a look at it on the front end. We'll view our page, and we can see when we hover over this image, we get our caption just like we wanted. And if we click on an image, it opens up here in a light box. There are a few features inside this light box. We can see the number of images. We can actually full screen this or go back to normal. We can close out the light box and we can go in between the images here with these arrows. This does close if you press the X or the escape on your keyboard. Now, I seriously doubt that Generate Blocks is ever going to add any kind of image gallery block, so I'm really glad to have found this solution. I'd be curious to know if you've used any other gallery blocks in the past, or maybe even used this one before. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to make sure to catch the next one, go ahead and hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.